Hey there. So today I'll be showing how to make complex curved shapes on SketchUp. And SketchUp is a great program for making, you know, inorganic shapes, straight edges, or like regular curves. But it's a bit harder to make shapes that have like irregular curved surfaces, stuff you can't make with simple geometry. The method I'm going to show you is best done on items with a length axis. But weird curves, so things like a boat hull, or a car's body, or you know, a whale, or what I'm going to demonstrate this on today is an airplane fuselage. So first you want to draw a transverse cross section of the object you want to make, so ideally at its widest point. And if your item is symmetrical left to right, um, then you, you want to cut it in half kind of, which is what I'm doing right now and make it, make it a component and, and then copy it over uh, and then flip it so that you kind of have like two symmetrical but mirrored sides and what you do to one side will happen to the other because it's a component and that way you don't have to do everything twice and you're going to want to use the push pull tool to start uh, making your actual object and uh, then after the first push, push pull you're going to want to do a second push pull, but this time uh, hold the control key down while you do it so that you'll make a separate section. And once you've uh, gotten your second section, you go to the cross section on the very end, and then you can use the scale tool to start um, to start making your shape into the curve you want it to kind of achieve. So you can see here, I'm scaling the cross section down because as a uh, plane fuselage gets closer to the front, it tapers. So I'm gonna scale it so that it's both shorter top to bottom and narrower left to right. And for the top to bottom scaling, I'm pressing control while using the scale tools tool. So uh, it'll scale to the center and I don't have to do it twice. And you can see it's kind of starting to taper a little bit nicely. So as you can see, I'm getting to like, kind of like the front of the plane now where the cockpit is and that's where all the irregular curves are starting to come in because you see if you look at the cross section of the airplane uh the cockpit is kind of above the nose cone but the cockpit's narrower than the nose cone and the nose cone is wider than the cockpit and they're both curved so how are you going to do this um the way i do it here is i find two endpoints and i kind of move it i use the move tool and i move one of the endpoints so that there's a kink and that where the cockpit should be uh, width wise that's narrower than where the nose cone should be and it looks kind of weird as a cross section here but you'll see where i'm gonna go uh, if you want the curve of your surface to look natural and not kind of like jagged uh, there's two ways to go about uh, tapering uh, your shape uh, one of them is you can use the push pull tool to extrude the surface the same amount each time but every time you scale it you scale it proportionally more and more uh, so that it gets smaller and smaller each time. Or you can scale it the same amount each time, but you're extruding it proportionally less and less. I'm kind of doing the first method right here. And you can see me bringing the calculator out now. And um, what I'm doing here is I'm calculating how much I should be pushing and pulling it out because as you can as you saw I, I've been scaling uh, the cross-section down the same amount each time if you've been looking at the bottom right corner of your screen 0 0.94 but I've been pushing and pulling it out a quarter less each time I, I kind of brought the calculator out so I could be precise obviously if you want to eyeball it that's fine too um, but yeah but as you see as I'm getting to the cockpit se uh, section I'm using the same method but I'm kind of using the move tool more and more now to adjust it to the way I want it to look because the scale tool isn't going to give me the exact like uh, curves I want near the where the irregular part is. I'll just fast forward it until I've reached the tip of the nose. But what's important to know is that um, I'm using the scale tool to kind of achieve the taper. But to achieve the actual irregular curves I'm trying to get, I'm using the move tool to move individual points. There's a few tips on using the move tool. Uh, one of them is that if you've made your shape out of arcs using the arc tool, and you find that you're trying to move the move a, a single point, but then the entire arc is moving, what you should do is uh, 
right click and select explode arc and that'll allow you to select individual points and another uh, another thing is that um, if you are finding that the point isn't moving in the dimension in sorry in the axis you want it to say you're trying to move it like up but it's only going to move along a certain weird di diagonal axis use the arrow keys um, that'll force your point to move in the direction you want it to I, I use the move tool to adjust the points a lot and eventually uh, achieve the kind of shape I want it to look like and now you can see here I accidentally made it uh, uh, too stubby like that's a weird looking airplane nose so that, that's okay uh, you basically you got to use the move tool and the scale tool creatively to kind of get it to look the way you want you know it's not a serious mistake it's easily fixed and uh here uh when you see me making the windows i kind of the reason i erase a large part of it is because because uh, when you look on airplanes the cockpit windows are flat they're not curved so that's kind of just what i'm doing here not important just a little clarification on what i'm doing but yeah so that's basically how the method works uh you make a cross section and you push it and scale it and then you move around individual points as you need to So once you finish making your object, uh, you can see it's it kind of looks very obviously like a mesh and not the smooth surface you want it to look like. Um, the way you get rid of this is select the entire object and then go to the soften edges slider. Um, if it's not already in your default tray, you can find it in the tools menu uh, on the top left. So yeah, you and then you move that slider until you don't see any of the lines you don't want to see anymore. And then if there are a few certain lines you do want hard edges on, then uh, you go to view in the top left again and you click hidden geometry, select those lines and slide the slider all the way back to the left. And those lines will become hard again. But yeah, um, you're going to want to delete the wall that's kind of in the middle. Uh, between the two objects and then kind of go to a bird's eye view use the select tool to select the solid line that goes down the middle and hide it uh, because uh, you need that line so that your surface still exists but you don't want to see that line and once again you should be using uh, you should be turning on hidden geometry so you can see these hidden lines to get, to erase them as you as you need so um yeah i finished the front of the plane i'm just going to use the same method to finish up the back of the plane i'll fast forward it but you get the general idea of what's going on um if you want your if you want your object to kind of get like uh narrower and narrower so kind of like a fish's tail and you scale it more one direction than the other and yeah so that's how i make long shapes with kind of irregular curves uh, you can use the same method for other objects you, you just got to make different cross sections and do the push pulling and scaling and moving differently uh, you know this is the cross section for like say if you wanted to make a ship or if you wanted to make more like a boat with like more of a speedboat kind of shape, the cross section maybe look kind of like this. Uh, this is maybe, I don't know, the cross section of a whale. And say if you wanted to make a car, the cross section would probably look kind of like this. But yeah, so I hope this helps out. Um, if you liked the video, maybe subscribe. And thank you for watching.